This is RJ Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. Anthony for three. Bang! That one goes this down. This one by Mattingly. Oh, hang on to the RJ Barrett. He does it again from downtown. He is just tearing the Orioles apart. It's good. It's good. Randall gets the bounce, and he there ties the go. game. Houston ducks under. Got it. And showing some dexterity as well with the left hand. Yankees win! Yankees win! Alright, what's going on? Oops, (laughs) here we go. What's going on everybody? I'm your host RJ Carbone. This is episode 326 of the podcast. Welcome to BD4. Episode 326, BD4, no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. And we also do MMA on the weekends now, too. Yankees every game when they're in season. Knicks every, I'm sorry, Yankees every series when they are in season. Knicks every game. And MMA on the weekends. We I saw a little bit of the MMA card tonight of UFC Fight Night. Was it 199? Or 200. Didn't really pay much attention though. Um, I was busy doing some assignments for school. And I had some stuff to do for work. But I, from what I, you know, w- was was watching and, you know, listening to. Because it was more just background noise. It seemed like it was a very strong card. The I know there was a brutal knockout in the main event. I think Hall. Was it Hill or Hall? He's a big-time contender, though, now. He got the knockout. And um, Jim Miller. The Jim Miller shit was funny. Because this is a... I don't know. I didn't know much about him, but apparently he's a, like a well-respected future Hall of Famer, they were saying, guy in the MMA community. And... Um, but I'm like, I, I hear the name Jim Miller. I'm like, all right, he's obviously got to be this white American dude. And he obviously, he was, he was, he was exactly that. He walks out with the American flag and the song he walks out to is um, Iron Man. And I'm thinking, how could you get more American than Jim Miller walking out to Iron Man? This dude's got a you know beard and everything. And it was funny because they were, um, is Cole Anthony wearing a Knicks jersey in the dunk contest? He is. If I look up every couple of seconds, minutes, whatever, it's because I'm gonna. Uh, I'll be watching this dunk contest. But it was funny because the uh, it was Paul Felder and um, Dominic Cruz, and then we're poking fun at him, like saying like when they look at Jim Miller, they just think of gunpowder and homemade beer. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the size of it. But he won, and this guy's MMA career has been spectacular. He's got 34 wins, so he's up there right with Cowboy Cerrone. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I'm kind of ashamed that I, you know, I've been in MMA now for a couple of years as a fan since 2020, and I still don't know much about Jim Miller, but now I do. Um, I saw a little bit of the three-point contest. So I was watching it. And I uh, the skills challenge obviously that's different this year. I didn't know they changed that up. Um, but right now the dunk contest is live as I'm watching, and Cole Anthony botched his first attempt. With it, it looks like Chris Paul is being used as a prop. Is that Chris Paul? No. Who the hell is that? Is that Ray Allen? I can't tell from here. Um, but we're talking Yankees in this episode. Okay, we have a couple more things to discuss um, that we didn't really bring up or go into too much detail in um, last night's episode about their shortstop situation. Because obviously that's a big deal. So now he's over two. Cole Anthony, Jesus. Um, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to the shortstop deal tonight. We'll, we'll just briefly discuss it. I don't know that this will be an hour episode like last night's was in 325, but for episode 326... Just going to you know, go over some of the um, shortstop possibilities that the Yankees have and some of the names that have been floating out there. 
and um, then I'll be that. Obviously, we talked a little bit about it last night, and I gave my hot take on Correa. Oh, that's his father who was being used as a prop. I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's why he's wearing the Knicks. Okay. He's wearing his father's jersey. Oh, that makes sense. Wow, I'm stupid. Oh, he got the third one down. Okay, that was good. I should do a live uh, judging of this. Damn. I always like the dunk contest and the three ball contest, but the dunk contest is usually the fun, the most fun part of All-Star Weekend. The All-Star game sucks now, dude. They, I don't even know what they do. They changed it up so it's not even a normal, traditional four-quarter score. It's some weird shit. The score restarts. Um, but maybe they brought they brought it back this year. Because I was looking at the over-under, and it was a legitimate over-under. It was like 321 to and a half. So maybe it is just going to be a normal game this year. That would be nice. Um, Yankees. Let's get to it. Let's head to our first break. When we get back, I want to discuss some shortstop stuff. You know, are we going to go and sign somebody long term? Are we going to go in house on the roster we have now? Are we going to go into our system eventually? Are we going to grab a stopgap in free agency or maybe via trade? So we'll discuss all of that when we get back from our first break. Welcome to the show, though. If you're new here, yeah. If you are new here, please be sure to subscribe to the podcast. You can sub to BD4 on the many listening platforms that we are on. Google Podcasts, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Anchor, Stitcher, all that stuff. You can watch the podcast on YouTube. So search BD4 on YouTube. You'll find us there. And um, yeah, follow me on social media. On Facebook, I'm RJ Carbone. And on Instagram, I'm at Rob J. Carbone. All right, we're going to head to our first break. And when we get back, we'll talk Yankees. Stay with us. Oh, man, I, I've, I've been thinking about it for a while because I'm sure I'm not sure myself what exactly I want the Yankees to do. Uh, realistically, I mean, we, I, I gave again, I gave my hot take on, on everything last night. Um, right. I, I really like I said last night, I would not I don't care how unpopular it is. This is my opinion. I'm going to say my opinion. I really want Correa. I want to be the bad evil scumbag Yankees again. I want people to hate us with a passion. I want, I mean, they already do, but even more. And I want to be the hated, hypocritical fans. You know, we get the guy we've been bashing. I just feel like that would piss people off so much. And the Yankees could possibly fuel off of that. But again, I don't see it happening. This is a guy who bashed Jeter. This is a guy who's not friendly with a lot of Yankee players. So there's no chemistry there. And I just, I just don't think the Yankees will ruin their image that way. Obi Toppin botched his first dunk attempt and fell into the crowd. That's nice. Go Knicks. Nice. Um. So we're going to be a little more realistic here. You know, I don't see the Yankees handing out a $350 million contract for a decade to Correa. Um, and I, I know they say they're out on Trevor's story. But to me, the Yankees saying that they are out on him is just 
you know, that could very well be just another tactic to get the other teams that are bidding on him to lowball him. You know what I mean? So I don't buy that too much. Um, listen, Trevor Story is a good player, right? The, 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 the pros, I guess we'll start with a couple of the pros. If they were to go out and sign Story as Obi Toppin finishes the second dunk he attempts, that was a nice dunk. Jumps over, I don't know who that is, but goes through the legs and slams it down. That was nice. Oh, it was behind the back. It wasn't through the legs. Wow. That was nice. I give that... I give that at least an eight and a half. Yeah. Um, sorry. I So, yeah, they say they're out on him. I don't buy it. Just a tactic to get other teams to lowball him. Um, but the, the, some of the strengths that I guess you could put out there, that I guess you could say in signing story, is, is obviously he fills the void. We have a void right now at shortstop, and this is a good quality all-star caliber shortstop we're talking about here. You know, through six seasons, he's uh, a two-time All-Star. He's got a batting average of 272 in his career. He's got an OPS of 863. Um, he has five seasons with at least 20 home runs. And he's got two seasons with at least 30 home runs. And, uh, and remember, in the shortened season, he had 11 home runs. Um, he averages three to six triples every season. Last four seasons, he had, he has had at least twenty stolen bases, and in three, he's led the league. I'm sorry, I read that stat wrong. In the last four seasons, he's had at least twenty stolen bases, three times. Um, but he led the league with fifteen stolen bases in that shortened schedule season. Um, so yeah, the positive is obviously you're filling that void with a good quality shortstop who's more than capable of putting up a productive season for you. Um, another one, he, he's going to be going to the Yankee Stadium. You know, um, it's a band box in Yankee Stadium. Everybody knows about the short porch. He could very well be uh, put up another 30-plus homer season here. Um, I know there are questions about LeMayhew being able to hit outside of Coors Field, um, but he's shown capable, and we're going to get to that Coors Field home road split thing later. Because you have to, you, you do have to mention it. Um, but speaking of DJ, you know this is somebody who is a former infield partner. Trevor Story and DJ, you know they they played together for several seasons, and they're still good friends. So, you know, possibly put that as another positive there. Um, and that was actually one of the five things back in October. There was something. I don't know if it was some article out there, but I was reading about it recently that back in October he had like five reasons or five things he wanted if he were to sign with another team. And, and one of the reasons was team culture and having like a, a tight-knit roster and, you know, reuniting with his buddy. You're right there. you know. And also what, winning was also one of the things he asked for. And, you know, what better franchise to go to than, than one that's all about winning um, in the Yankees. At least in their history. Um, but they get to the playoffs every year, right? And, and the Rockies don't. But those are some of the positives if you're getting Trevor's story is is you know those few things I mentioned. Now there are some cons. Alright, who's this? Who's zero? Number zero. I don't know. Again, guys, if you are watching the podcast and you notice that I'm kind of distracted looking up every couple of 30 seconds or so, every 30, every 30 seconds it's because I'm watching the uh, the dunk contest. Who's number zero with the Houston Rockets? It's got to be a rookie because I don't remember. I, I can't see on the back of his jersey. Um, Yeah. Some of the negatives, um, I think the first thing you have to look at is that elbow injury. Um, does that affect the defense? Now, the eye test says he's fine. And if you look at the metrics, you know, like DRS, defensive run saved, and UZR, 
they agree that he's a good defensive shortstop. But last season, and maybe it had something to do with the elbow, he was graded below average defensively. Not in DRS or UZR, but in, uh, I think it was outs above average and something called fielding runs or something. But every year outside of last year, he's rated above average in every stat defensively. But I think the concern is that his arm has regressed year to year, specifically. And then, like I said, the home road splits are definitely something to at least look at and and be a little concerned about, maybe. Um, First off, he's coming off a down year overall. Um, He had the second worst batting average in his career this past season, or last season, and he had the... um, either the worst or second worst OPS of his career. It was the second worst. And if you ignore the 2020 shortened season, he was tied for his lowest home run total and second lowest RBI total of his career. But it's the concerning home road splits, obviously with Coors Field, that get to people. Um, in his career, his entire career, he's a 303 hitter on the road. On uh, sorry, at home, he's 303 with a 972 OPS at home. And away from home, he's 241 with a 752 OPS. Um, you go back to last season. Specifically, he was 203 on the road with the 718 OPS there. And while last year's splits are more drastic than the usual home road splits for Story, it's still an every year thing. It's a bi- it's still a pretty big difference home road with Story every year when you look it up. If you pick it apart individually, it's not like anything, you know, kind of skews the rest of the averages. So while Yankee Stadium might help like it did DJ, it doesn't automatically mean Story is going to produce there too. You know, it's. It's unfortunately a talking point that you have to have with every Rockies player who's going to a new team. Um, and then we've got my biggest problem, uh, which I, I feel like, I don't know how, man, because every year we add fuel to the fire here in this area and still we don't get enough people talking about it. But the strikeouts, you know, they're, they're a little bit high with a guy like Trevor Story. He has a 28% career K rate. In five of his six major league seasons, he's over 25%. Now, it's not turning me away from him completely because he's still a great player and he's a guy who can hit for average. We've seen him hit over, again, 270. He's hit into the 290s before. But, you know, you look at the Yankees' lineup construct already, as it is, and you have somebody like Judge, who struck out at a 25% rate last season, and that was his career best. You've got Giancarlo Stanton, who struck out at a 27% rate last year. Gary, who struck out at a 28% rate. You've got Voigt, who struck out at a 31% rate. You've got Gallo, who struck out with the Yankees at a 39% rate last season. So one, two, three, four, five, and then you'll have Story, who was 23% last year in a career best. Six. So that's six Yankees. That's, that's two-thirds of their lineup, man, who strike out a pretty decent amount. Um, and that leaves you with what? Maybe DJ LeMayu and Gio Urshela really as the only true contact guys, but even Gio last season had a tough time making contact. He was 27%. On, on uh, strikeouts. And you look at the teams, cause the reason I mentioned the strikeouts, you look at all these teams who've been winning World Series championships in recent years. Let's let's go f- as far back as five years ago. Um, they're all either great hitting all-around teams who hit for contact, or if they're not that, they at least have the pitching staff to mitigate that. They have incredible depth, and they've got top-notch aces. And I'm not, I'm not talking numbers. You know that doesn't tell the whole story. One or two guys can influence a team ERA or a K rate pretty significantly. But I'm just talking 
roster construct. You know, and you look at it again. The last five years, um, last season, you had the Atlanta Braves. They had a very solid bullpen. They had an excellent starting staff, and that showed that showed in the playoffs. Uh, you look at the 2020 season. The Dodgers, I believe, won it. Right? They had both an elite pitching staff, and they had guys in there who put the bat on the ball. The Nationals in 2008, uh, 2019. They had a lot of guys who put the ball in play. A lot. And they had, you know, I'm pretty sure they had a pretty damn good one, too. Um, the Boston Red Sox in 2018. We all know. You know, we were victims of, of them in the playoffs. I went to that 17-1 to game or whatever it was. Um, they had an all-around offensive powerhouse. I mean, that lineup was based on barreling up the ball. You know, uh, Houston in 2017, same thing. They had, you know, the guys, they cheated just so they can make the most contact in baseball, right? And they had the starting staff to back it up. Right? I mean, it's, it's you look at the Yankees, their starting staff, and we'll touch on it in a second. Cole, Severino, Montgomery, Tyone, TBD. That shit ain't carrying you. And their relief pitching is pretty so-so. So my, my verdict here, adding another one of those guys who strike out in story, I mean, he struck out as many as 191 times before. I don't know. You know, there's, there's chance, there is a chance that the, the, you know, the financially strapped Yankees can get him for relatively cheap. And still save their precious money for Judge. You know, because Story is coming off a down season. So he might be getting some short-term offers here. You know, maybe at most $80 million for three years. Or $60 million for two. Or maybe you get a one-year deal. You know, maximize the average annual value. You know, like $35 million or something like that. You know, maybe you... Maybe he accepts a deal like that because he's only 29 years old right now and he will still be able to rebuild his market in a year or two or three, you know, at 31, 32 tops. And that's still young enough to get a decent contract. And especially when you look at the shortstop market next offseason, yeah, you've got Trey Turner, you've got Xander Bogarts, you've got Swanson in there. Um, but you have to think they're going to be off the market soon enough with extensions because they mean way too much to their teams. I mean, you already have Dodgers insiders saying that re-signing Trey needs to be a priority. Uh, Xander might test the open market, I hear, but I think he's going to re-sign eventually. And I feel like Swanson, an Atlanta native, is going to take that Freeman path and be, become a longtime Brave. Um and then in 2023, that offseason, it's pretty dull looking too. I think Kiner Falafa, whatever the hell his name is, is like the leading guy. And maybe Brandon Crawford in there. So I think Story could get a lot in that market. Um, you know, be the hot commodity of that of that shortstop market in the next couple of years. Um, so he might take a lesser deal now, maximize his annual value, and then get the bigger, longer payday when he's 31 years old. In a couple of years. But even with all that. Even with all that said. I, I still don't know if it's worth it. For the Yankees. Because um, again. He could very well go back to striking out. 25 to 30 percent of the time. You know. And, and there are the elbow concerns. His arm has declined. And the home road splits are pretty drastic. I just think all of that is a little bit too much. For me to pay. Um. A lot of money to story, even if it's lesser than Lena Correa. And you also have to remember at some point, Anthony Volpe and this Peraza kid too will be ready. You know, and the from what I'm hearing about Trevor's story is he's not willing to switch positions. So I, I don't know that I do Trevor's story. Uh, I wouldn't hate it again if the price was right. But the price being right for me is probably an unrealistic price. Um, so, 
I want Correa, man. But there's another guy I want to talk about. Um, and if you saw the thumbnail on YouTube, you probably know who I'm talking about. I might have even said his name <laughs> already. But uh, we're going to get to him when we get back. Stay with us. Be right back. Hey, guys. So I've noticed that only a small portion of you who watch BD4 on YouTube are actually subscribed. So if you do enjoy this podcast and maybe you want to be notified when new episodes release, I'd consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. This way we can help the channel grow and you won't miss a single episode of BD4. All right, let's get back to it. So if you guys want to follow me on social media, be sure to do so right now. I'm on Facebook at RJ Carbone. And I'm also on Instagram at Rob J Carbone. Once again, if you want to find me on Facebook, that is RJ Carbone. Instagram at Rob J Carbone. So BD4 is on so many platforms to listen to. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud. You can listen to us on Spotify. You can find us on our sponsor, Anchor, and many other listening platforms as well, wherever you get your podcasts. But we are also available to watch on YouTube. So if you want to watch us on YouTube, go subscribe there. But if you prefer to listen to us, again, many, many, many listening platforms. Just be sure to subscribe, download, give us a rating, a review, comment, share the podcast, and all that fun stuff. This is BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. Andrelton Simmons. I know. Uh, listen, he, he's coming off a very poor season offensively. Um, he batted two twenty three with a five fifty eight OPS. He had only three home runs. He drove in only 31 RBIs. And this was in 131 games. In his career, he's not too much better. He's a 265, 683 hitter. So he's a light hitter, um, but I guess the positive here is that he's an extreme contact hitter. So he is an outstanding contact bat, a 9%, 9% strikeout rate in nearly 5,000 plate appearances in his career. So that's the plus, you know, I like those guys. Uh, well, <laughs> you got one there. Um, he's also a defensive specialist. He's an outstanding shortstop. Very good defensively. Um, the eye test, uh, the metrics, they'll tell you that. And, you know, because he's a very light hitter, I'm assuming he's probably going to come for cheap. Um, cheaper than story, obviously. Possibly on a one-year deal. So your true stopgap right there. I just, you know, Andrelton Simmons, um, part of me kind of wants this. Right, because he can, you know, I see him batting at least 275, and maybe he can give them that, you know, pure contact. But the other part of me is like, I don't want that extreme pull up pure hitter either. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want it to be that extreme, just like a straight contact hitter. Like, he's not, it's not like he's prime Ichiro, right? He's a slightly better version of Ronald Torres at the plate at this point. You know what I mean? So I don't know that I want him being that stopgap for the year. Um, not starting every day. You know, uh, and this is this is at least until Volpe or Peraza prove they're ready. 
But who knows when that's going to be? You know, it could be later in the season. Yeah, I feel like that's the best case scenario is they're ready September. I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about Simmons. Uh, I, I still, like I said, man, to me it's career or bust. And I know that's not going to happen. So, I, I, I just, it's an interesting situation. Because the current alignment they could do, they could roll with that, which there are a ton of options. They're not all the greatest options. You know, you could roll with LeMahieu at first base if you do something about Voight and you trade him for another position. If Voight is here, then you have LeMahieu maybe possibly uh, third base, and you got Gio at shortstop. You know, Gio's a fill-in shortstop he's never you know we, we saw it at the end of last season a lot so there are options like that um, maybe DJ is the one who plays every day but bounces around I don't know but um it's, it's really going to be interesting to see what they do man because you know, this is it's kind of a mess for a team that's supposed to be a World Series contender man it's kind of a mess. This is the main, the the two like captain spots uh, on the field, like the center field position and in the shortstop position, they've got some pretty big holes. You know, I don't know what the hell Aaron Hicks is gonna provide them. You know what I mean? And I'm really, I, I'm concerned. I'm, I'm curious. I mean, they got a lot of work to do. They've got a lot of work to do um, if they want to move the needle. And I'm not sure. I'm not so sure it can be done in one off season. That's the problem. Um, and then, like I said earlier, you look at their rotation, and it's not that great, man. Cole Severino, Tyon Montgomery, and then the fifth starter—you don't even know. You know, maybe you know, whenever spring training does begin, you would think that Herman uh, Schmidt and Luis Hill are gonna battle it out, possibly. But you got your concerns elsewhere. You know, Gary Cole, how is he going to perform without the spider attack for an entire season? We saw him struggle with it, without it, um, last season. You know, the numbers were drastically different. Not just the traditional statistics, but I'm talking spin rate and all those stats. Told a, told a big story. Severino, coming off a long layoff. How often do pitchers coming off a layoff that long come back and be elite again? Jamison Tyone, he's got the injury concerns himself there. I don't know what he's going to provide them. I don't know if he's going to be able to stay on the field. Jordan Montgomery is okay, but he's a 4-5. So there are a lot of question marks. Even if you know one of Heel, Schmidt, or Herman look great in spring training, there's no guarantee they look great in the regular season because you know, they're all question marks. We still need another frontline starter next to Garrett Cole. I can't trust Severino to be that. The bad news is they waited a bit too long. You know, they had a shot before the CBA talks, and now they're going to wait it out, and the best option is probably to go cheap at this point because there's nothing out there. It's it's likely that they'll be operating on a budget, you know, with, with Judge needing to be extended and all. And I, you know, Carlos Rodon isn't moving the needle, but if they can get him on a, a prove-it-to-me contract, then, yeah, I'll, I'll take Rodon. He had a very good season last year does the elbow hold up is it the elbow or is it the shoulder but whatever it is you know it caused some problems for him last year and um again unfortunately all the best options seem like they're very unrealistic the correa thing the freeman thing and the luis castillo trade that i've very much been wanting for forever which we discussed in episode 309 that also seems like it's very unrealistic. We got a good thing going with him. With who is it? Jonathan India is the kid's name. So I don't know, man. That's also the rotation is a gigantic question mark. It's not. It's not looking great, man. This 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 could. I'm not loving this Yankees front office, but the way they've been operating, everything's got to be on a budget. That's why people are starting to call them the Pittsburgh Yankees in. I don't know how they're going to fix this. So those are my thoughts. Those are my thoughts. Maybe we'll have another 
Yankees episode out soon. We're going to take it day by day, but until anything happens, I don't know what else we could talk about because it's just been dead. It's a standstill. You know, every time these two sides meet, the uh, players' union and the um, the owners, nothing happens. And I think I read somewhere that it's going to be until February 28th. Um, and, and if there's no deal by then, then they're saying there's a chance the regular season is going to be delayed. So that's that. Um, and there's no nothing really else going on. There's nothing. I mean, I heard Cameron Mabin is going to be part of the broadcast booth for 40 games this year, so that's cool. I'm going to miss Singleton, but it's nice that we have Mabin. I like Mabin. And uh, Beltron, right? Beltron will be an analyst as well for some time. Um, yeah, we lost Singleton. We lost Showalter. I wish they would bring David Wells back, but I'm pretty, I, I've got my own theory there. I think the one time that Wells was on the post-game show, he was ripping into Gary and some of the other Yankees you spitting the truth and I think that's why they've never brought him back since um because he wasn't being a Yankee boy um so that's it guys that's all we've got we're gonna head to our final break when we get back from break we'll end it with the NYY NYK MMA question of the day stay with us Now, if you are listening to BD4 on Apple Podcasts, be sure to give us a five-star rating and a review, if you so please. So once again, this is if you are listening to BD4 on Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star rating and review. Thank you. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this episode, but first... I also want to let you know, I have another blog. The blog I'm writing for is on ultimatesportsnetworks.com, titled The Bomber Bocker Blog. If you want to go subscribe to this blog, you should do so using my promo code 6A2841ERJC. Using that, you'd get a discount $7.99 a month to get the best Knicks and Yankees opinionated content around. Once again, guys, the Bomber Bocker blog on ultimatesportsnetworks.com using promo code 6A2841ERJC, $7.99 a month. A custom wall tapestry is a surefire way to uplift any room's aesthetics with a personal touch. This 100% polyester wall tapestry comes with hemmed edges for extra durability while its mildew and water resistant properties ensure years worth of decorating bliss. The advanced tapestry printing techniques guarantee crisp detail even for the craziest of designs in any of the multiple size choices. You can select a size of 26 by 36 inches, 51 by 60, 68 by 80, and 88 by 104. These wall tapestries usually ship in 7 to 10 business days, and the price ranges from $24.99 to $69.99, all dependent on the size you select. 
The Bomber Bocker Blog wall tapestries come in orange, gray, and black. But most importantly, be sure when purchasing a wall tapestry for the Bomber Bocker Blog that you use promo code 6A2 eight four one e r j c six eight two eight four one e r j c just go to ultimate sports networks.com and click on the shop mvp tab searching the bomber bocker blog and there you have it They're saying, and I'm, and I'm seeing some of it, but not all of it, that this dunk cath- contest is absolute garbage. <laughs> They're even ripping it on in the uh, in the booth. Uh, yeah. I don't know. The whole All Star Weekend has been has always been pretty shit shit outside the dunk contest. So it sucks that the best part of the night has been the worst part of the night. Um, let's get to it. Let's, let's wrap this one up with our NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day for episode 326. Let's get it. All right. So, our question, our question for episode 326 our NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day brought to you by Anchor. Which Yankees legend played in every single one of the team's games from 2003 through 2005? All right. So one more time. Which Yankees legend played in every single one of the team's games from 2003 through 2005? So let me know the answer, whether that be on Facebook or on Instagram in my DMs or in the comments section once I publish one of the little promo short clips to this episode. Well, that was a nice talk. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. This is episode 326 of BD4, and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. It's the best way to make a podcast. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm.